Well, I was warning once again about China and the cyber threat that exists around the Communist Party. Uh, the uh, House Appropriations Committee hearing yesterday played out this way. Watch. The scale of the Chinese cyber threat is unparalleled. They've got a bigger hacking program than every other major nation combined and have stolen more of our personal and corporate data than all other nations, big or small, combined. If each one of the FBI's cyber agents and intel analysts focused exclusively on the China threat, on nothing but China, Chinese hackers would still outnumber FBI cyber personnel by at least 50 to 1. So what's Joe Biden doing about it? Meanwhile, there's this Bridgewater Associates founder, Ray Dalio, who, of course, has been an incredible supporter of China uh, for years. He wrote this in a LinkedIn memo. Uh, the United States and China are on the brink of war and are beyond the ability to talk, according to Ray Dalio. Joining me right now is American Enterprise Institute senior fellow, former Department of Defense and National Security Council staffer, Zach Cooper. Zach, good to have you. Thanks very much. We've been on this China story for years. It's gotten worse and worse over the years. What is your assessment of that uh, threat regarding the hacking and the cyber threat from China? It is remarkable to hear Chris Ray talk about a 50 to 1 advantage for the Chinese in terms of hacking. And, you know, just if you think about the scale of the threat, we've been talking about maybe 200 or 300 billion dollars in intellectual property stolen by China from the United States alone. That's ignoring the other global hacking that China is doing. This is just a massive theft. And, you know, it's sort of remarkable given that the Chinese government keeps saying they want the economic relationship to get back to normal. Well, if the normal relationship looks like China stealing hundreds of billions of dollars in U.S. intellectual property theft, I don't think a lot of Americans want to go back to that kind of normal trading relationship. Yeah, I mean, it's costing hundreds of billions of dollars to corporate America who are watching their patents get exploited, who are watching, uh, unfortunately, uh, their products uh, made up the same way in China. And then you've got Ray Dalio telling us that China and the U.S. are on the brink of war. Is it not the corporate sector that has been, has been funding the expansion of our number one adversary? Is it not Ray Dalio who has been telling us to buy Chinese stocks uh, of companies that may be tied to the Chinese military and the CCP uh, uh, fusion? And then he comes out and tells us that we're on the brink of war. What is he doing about it? What's your take? Well, first, I, I just don't think he's right. I, I actually think that what we've seen is U.S. officials say recently, including the head of the Indo-Pacific Command, that yes, we have to be worried about a conflict, but that they don't see one happening in the near term. Of course, you know, we don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow, but, but let's be clear, there's no reason to think we're on the brink of, the, of war right now. And the Indo-Pacific commander said, you know, he doesn't think 2027 is some sort of timeline. So I, I don't know what Ray Dalio is hearing uh, in Beijing, but it's certainly not what U.S. officials are saying. I, I think what Dalio is probably worried about is that there are going to be restrictions on U.S. investors that are putting money into China, especially into areas that have dual-use implications that could go into high-end computing that could eventually help the Chinese military. And, yeah. and I think there's going to be real restrictions coming out of both the White House and Congress that will affect investors like Dalio. Well, I'll believe it when I see it as far as the White House is concerned, given the evidence of a very soft approach on communist China. And, you know, w with good reason that uh, we're talking about the potential for war, look what China has been doing. Uh, we've got a surveillance balloon that traversed America, half the country, and sent military secrets back in real time. We've got police stations across the country that are surveilling us. There's TikTok. There's the intellectual property that you're, theft that you're just talking about. Chinese authorities are ramping up the pressure on U.S. businesses now operating in China. There's this story. U.S. consulting firm Bain & Company confirmed yesterday that Chinese police showed up at their Shanghai office to question their employees. The Financial Times reported that uh, they also took computers and phones from the Bain offices. I mean, this is not a Chinese company. I spoke with the Atlas organization founder and the uh, author of The Decisive Decade, Jonathan Ward, about this yesterday on this program. Here's what he said. Watch. 
of China's retaliation against American firms in the China market. I mean, I really ha I hate to say it, but if you're an American company and you're in China and you seek to grow in China, I mean, forget it. This is really not a good strategy. It's not going to work out. I think the companies that are planning on being in China in the long haul are going to be very disappointed uh, with, with what actually happens in that market. The next phase is I think shareholders now need to look at corporate exposure to China and understand the real risks. Does corporate America get it? Uh, look what just happened to Bain. Chinese officials showing up at their door, taking computers and phones, surveilling the company. Uh, are, are American companies operating on the ground in China at risk? Of course they're at risk. And I, I agree with what Jonathan said. I, I think at the end of the day, you know, if you're an American company and you have Chinese user data, which which is basically true of almost all U.S. companies that are selling into the Chinese market, then you are going to be potentially a target for the Communist Party. They're going to want to gather that user data and make sure that it doesn't get out of China. And the same thing is increasingly true over data that is uh, indicative of what's going on in the Chinese economy more broadly. And so, you know, I think what's happening to Bain is happening to other companies. There have been rumors about similar discussions overnight. We saw just in the last few weeks, investigators say they're going to go after Micron. So, you know, this isn't new, but it is a continuing pattern. And if I were a, a board member of a major company that was selling it to China or hoping to use China as a production hub, I would be really concerned about this. And I think we've just seen it step up over the last few years, and I expect that will continue. Yeah, I mean, here, here you have Ray Dalio telling everybody to double down and triple down buying Chinese companies. Uh, that, in effect, has funded the expansion of communist China, only to have him come back and say, oh, yeah, we're on the brink of war. It's just incredible. Zach, thank you. Zach Cooper joining us.